Well, welcome back to Rough Restos. As you may see, things have slightly changed since the last video I put up on the golf. Um, so the original plan was to potentially either find a better shell than the last blue shell I found and build a minter, but the problem is I just haven't got time. That's going to take, it's going to be another year and a half project again at least, um, with what time I can try and squeeze in at the minute. It's probably that extended to like three years worth of project and I just, with all the other stuff going on, can't do it. So then it was a case of, we use that shell? Mm, yeah, don't want to do that. I haven't got time to find another shell. Or I almost sold a lot, but that's not very convenient. Cornwall's not good for selling. So instead, we are doing something. And what we're doing is basically moving over most of the parts from this golf over to the other shell. So it's not getting painted, which is a shame, but that will then cut down it from being a full restoration, nice mint build, you know, proper nice build to a just put it together and have some fun. Um, at least that way I've decided I don't want to keep it, which will be probably unlikely by the time I build it. Um, I can sell it, but I think it'll be staying and I'll produce it again one day. But for now, it's going to be a case of just move all the mechanicals over from this car, which aren't dead, to a new car. So I've already cracked on because I had a few hours in a couple of evenings since the last week. So I've already stripped out the interior, all the wiring from inside, all the dashboard, and undone everything from the inside, which requires to be undone to remove the stuff from the outside mechanicals. Uh, the other night I removed all the damaged wings, all the suspension, that kind of bits on the front. So now all we're left with is, we got the engine to remove. So now I'm just gonna unplumb and unwire it. Unfortunately, when I originally done the wire in this car, I'd done it really neat and tucked it all away, which is now gonna make it more of a pain because I've got to pull it all back through all the roots it went. So like it runs through the wing and all this stuff here. Got to pull it all the way back into a scuttle and undo all the wire from the engine rather than having a couple of separate harnesses it could undo. But you live and you learn. I wasn't expecting to crash it and have to rip it out again. So I've got to pull all the wiring back for the car, uh, undo the plumbing on the engine, pull the engine out. Now, this could be a bit of a challenge at the minute because the chassis rail is currently pushing into a timing belt down there. So the engine can't just come up, it's got to go sideways. But obviously, the gearbox is already here at the chassis rail, so we're going to have to try and wiggle it out a bit. But it should be fine. So I've got to Unmantle that, undo the wiring, do a downpipe, and then that should be the engine ready to come out. That's what I've already removed. Uh, the, I think the passenger side shock isn't actually damaged. The driver side shock, that's toast. Absolutely destroyed it. Ripped the spot welds off, ripped all the mounting tabs out for the um, hub there, and bent, just bent everything. That's toast. That's a wishbone. It's cracked and split. It's not flat anymore, it's dead. I think both hubs are pretty good. I'm still not sure if this is entirely straight on the cracked on the crash side. Um, and then as for the panels here, obviously we just absolutely toasted the whole thing. So it's it's been smashed entirely. <laughs> so yeah, it's not gonna be a really long series, I don't think, like um, some of the other projects. It's gonna be a case of just for the most part of it, get it together and build it. So I think we're gonna crack on now with time lapse and get this engine pulled out before we go out later on. So let's crack on. <laughs> Finally, uh, 
arrowed in, and she's ready to come out, I think. Uh, it should be able to disconnect it now. Uh, down pops it fit in this because it's a three and a half inch output on the turbo. There's not much room for nuts. So two of them come undone perfect. The other two you have to get in and do little bits of turns whilst moving down pot up. Obviously nuts don't do absolute pain, but sorted. Um, I'll let the rest of it come apart easy. So let's just see now if it's gonna come out. So the only concern is the fact that the chassis rail is wedged in a time belt at the minute, so we'll just have to see what happens here. Right, okay, so engine's out. I've just had a bit of a look over it. Um, the auxiliary belt, that's dead. That's been toasted. Need to do one of them. The timing belt covers, um, they need a bit of straightening out if I can do, because they are in the timing belt and pushing against the tensioner. So I thought that was knackered, but I think it's fine. So when I got to this a second ago, the timing belt was a bit slack. So I'm assuming as it's pushed into it, it's backed off the manual tensioner or stretch belt, one of the two. So I re it up turned it over and it turns freely and we still got compression so I'm going to say the engine's absolutely fine what I am going to do is obviously get a new time belt new tensioner because it's been dented there um, although it's only done like hardly any miles and re-time it up and it should be good to go I think uh, oh that is pulley that also taken a few whacks uh, to be fair it's taken a little bit of damage but it's probably still good to be fair so again we're trying to do this on a bit of a budget just to do another budget build for now because I don't want to spend a fortune on it because it's not not what I want to keep if that makes sense so yeah I think that was a win um, I'm gonna wrap that up there now really so if you want to follow the progress on the new 20 valve turbo quick build then um why not stick around and keep an eye on the videos and with any luck I'll see you again next time cheers Thank you.